Hey everyone and welcome back to my lecture series on PDEs. Today's video is going to be focused on solving parabolic PDE problems when your boundary conditions are non-homogeneous. I mentioned last time that separation of variables can only be used when your boundary conditions are homogeneous, so clearly in this situation we can't use separation of variables. However, you'll see that we do end up using separation of variables eventually, but after we've converted the boundary conditions to a homogeneous form. So let's get started. Suppose I have a really simple PDE problem once again that describes heat conduction along a one-dimensional domain, so just like last time. Here's the governing partial differential equation, and these are the boundary and initial conditions. The only difference from the previous problem we did is that the boundary conditions on U aren't both zero. Now before I get to solving this PDE, I'm going to step aside a bit and give you an intuitive idea of the technique we'll end up using. If I draw a graph of U versus X, then it would start looking like the function phi, because that's our initial condition. But as time goes on, the ends of the function phi are going to drift so as to obey the boundary conditions. Eventually, the part remaining in the middle will follow suit in order to get rid of whatever local temperature or concentration gradients are present. So once the system reaches steady state, we get a linear temperature or concentration profile, whatever you're trying to describe with U. Because I know that my steady state profile will be linear and that whatever deviations I get from the steady state profile will be due to transients that result from my initial condition, I can make the hypothesis that my solution for U will be the sum of a steady state solution and a transient solution. The idea is that initially this transient solution has an effect on what U looks like, but as time goes on its effect becomes smaller and smaller until we're only left with the steady state solution. If you're not convinced that my steady state profile for U will be a straight line, then don't worry because I'll prove it to you soon enough. So let's go back to our problem. Our goal now is to determine both the steady state and the transient solutions for U. But notice that the steady state solution we're trying to find only depends on X. There's no time dependence because it's a solution that results when all the fluctuations in U die out. So if we want to solve for the steady state solution, all we have to do is cross out the time derivative and solve a really simple ODE. Because there's only two derivatives in x in this differential equation, we don't need it to obey the initial condition, because the initial condition occurs at time zero and has no influence on what the solution eventually becomes for infinite time. However, we do need our steady state solution to obey the boundary conditions, because the boundary conditions are present for all times and not just for the initial time point. It's very easy to solve this ODE. If you integrate once, you'll get DUSS by DX equals C1. And if you integrate it a second time, you'll get USS equals C1X plus C2, which is a straight line, exactly what I said earlier. To find the constant C1 and C2, you just have to apply the boundary conditions. So at X equals zero, U sub SS equals U zero. So u0 equals c2, so c2 is u0. And at x equals l, uss equals u sub l. So c1 is u sub l minus u0 over l. So our steady state solution is uss equals ul minus u0 times x over l plus u0. And that's it. We found our steady state solution. Now all that's left is the transient solution but we don't quite know what equation and what boundary conditions the transient solution has to satisfy, so we'll have to do some work to find the transient subproblem we need to solve. Once again, let's go back to our PDE problem. We know from what we said before that the solution U is composed of the sum of a steady state solution and a transient solution, so if we plug this into our PDE, we'll get di U sub SS plus UTR by di T, equals the second partial derivative of USS plus UTR with respect to X. Because the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, we can split up the terms. Now we know that the time derivative of USS is zero because USS corresponds to the steady state time independent solution. We also know that its second derivative with respect to X is zero because that's the equation we originally solved to get USS. All we're left with is a PDE just for the transient solution. 
which is the exact same PDE we had for U. So that's convenient, but what about the boundary and initial conditions? If we plug our U into the boundary conditions up here, then we'll have USS at x equals 0 plus UTR at x equals 0 equals U0. But our steady state solution already satisfies this boundary condition. So since USS at x equals 0 is U0, the value of the transient solution at x equals 0 is just 0. Similarly, for x equals L, we have USS at x equals L plus UTR at x equals L equals UL. But our steady state solution alone already satisfies this boundary condition, which means the boundary condition on the transient solution at x equals L is also zero. Now that just leaves us with the initial condition. If we plug in our u, we'll see that USS at t equals zero plus UTR at t equals zero equals phi of x, which means our transient solution will have the following initial condition. After we substitute USS and subtract it from both sides. To make things simple, I'm going to denote this function as psi of x. So overall, our transient subproblem is given by this PDE, these two boundary conditions, and this initial condition. Notice what's happened here. Our boundary conditions, which were previously non homogeneous, are now homogeneous. So it's possible to go ahead and use separation of variables on the transient solution. I'm not going to actually be doing that because the process is very similar to what we covered in the last two videos. In fact, the equations are almost exactly the same. So if you want to go through the separation of variable process, I'd recommend going back and watching those two videos. I'll put the links up in the description. Anyway, after you use separation of variables on the transient solution, here's what you'll end up with for the full solution u. A steady state solution plus a rather long transient solution. Notice that as time approaches infinity, this exponential in the transient solution vanishes, and the entire transient solution goes away, and we're just left with the steady state straight line. And that's it. You've now solved your first PDE problem with non-homogeneous boundary conditions. I'll see you in the next video.